Good morning and welcome to another stroll. Another noisy start as well. Geez, why do I pick these places? Um, we're in the heart of what would have been the Rockingham Forest back in the medieval times. I would have been surrounded by trees completely, more so than I already am. Um, and the heart of that Rockingham Forest, the sort of administrative HQ, was a village, uh, was the village of Brigstock. And Brigstock's where we're heading for today. Don't know too much about it. I've done a bit of research, but uh, I've sort of flirted with it in the car before. It's full of history layers and layers of history and I won't be covering everything because it just would be overkill so I'll try and pick out the interesting stuff but otherwise it'll just be a visual stroll. Um, history of Brigstock apart from being the heart of the Rockingham Forest it's got Roman it's got Iron Age Bronze Age it goes back a long long way and of course Anglo-Saxon like all the others was when it really took shape. Um, unusually uh, for us there's actually evidence of this one being Anglo-Saxon if I can find it later on so we'll be able to prove the Anglo-Saxon uh, origins of Brigstock uh, when we get there but until then it's a case of roaming through the centre uh, which I think will be busy and uh, see what we can find. Just coming down into the village now on the Livedon Road. Just moving out of the sort of more recent housing stock into something with a bit of age. The thatched roof on this house coming up, that's uh, Roke House. And that dates back to the 1500s. Over 500 years old, well, circa 500 years old. Hello, tiger. And how old are you? Oh, never mind. Nobody likes my videos. Just about every house in this village is either grade two listed or should be grade two listed. This is in the should be category, but there's age everywhere. It looks like a converted barn up ahead. Fantastic doorway in the middle, that would have been a barn door, one assumes. Vertical ventilation slits. On the right is Stable Hill Cottage, late 1600s. Ghost door on the right there as we enter Stable Hill. Magnificent chimney on the top of that one. That used to be the post office from about the 1880s to the 1970s, barring a few years. I think at one point for a short period of time it moved next door to number four which is not here anymore would have been we'd be looking at it now but it's been demolished but yeah that was the post office for most of the village's life the shop on the corner here was a bakery um, and a grocer's
there's still a primary school in Brigstock, but on old 1885 map, or an 1885 map, there were two other buildings marked as schools. I can find nothing about them. But you can see on the left here, old schoolhouse. This was a school. I wish I could tell you more. Um, as I say, it was a school in 1885, because it was on the map. But uh, clearly a schoolhouse. We just turned off onto the Bennyfield Road, so if you're coming here via Arundel, you can carry on to Lower Bennyfield, and instead of turning up the hill to Upper Bennyfield, just go straight on. I think it's actually signs, signposted Brigstock, and if you do go straight on, you'll be coming towards me now. On the Bennyfield Road, I'm coming up here just to look at these cottages with the thatch roofs up in the distance. Uh, they were for estate workers for uh, Fermion Hall, just somewhere in these parts. Um, a mixture of 1800s and 1700s cottages, but very nice, well looked after. Immaculate uh, thatches, to my eyes anyway. The first two, this one here, and the one next to it, with the sort of high gable at the front. They're both sort of early 1800s. Very nice. And the sort of double at the back there with the multiple front arches. That's actually the late 1700s, so they're slightly older. But they're all nice. Not a bad place to live. You can research these walks for hours and hours on end, but often it's only when you come out and walk around and see things that uh, you identify some of the true history of the village, things that were not covered or seemingly not covered in any documentation. You just have to bump into signs on walls, signs on houses and whatever, and learn from there. If you look at this wall that's sticking out in front of us now on the left, I mean, now I know what it is because of what's written on it. I can see what it is, which is the, uh, the village stocks. Where you would put the stray animals that might be roaming around. The village pound, should I say, not stocks. What am I talking about? Village pound. Be good if they were stocks, but yeah. Village pound with a cow on. That'll be at least mid 1800s, if not older. Got the hook left here. On to Kennel Hill. Guess what that was named after. Nice old barn on the right there, that hasn't yet been converted. Coming up on the left were the kennels of the, I think they were called the Pitchley and Woodland Hunt. And these were built in the 1870s. I think they only closed in the 1960s, although I can't be sure. I did write to them and ask for details, but they didn't want to talk to me. Um, but yeah, they were kennels for a long, long time and went back a long, long time. They're all part of the hunt, so it would have been uh, dogs related to the local hunt. No idea what they're used for today. Brigstock, I mean, I counted about 10, 11, 12 pubs that were once here. In 2023, there were two that were still standing, and this is one of them. The old three cocks takes back to at least the late 1700s. But sadly, it's closed. It closed last year, 2023. I hope it'll open again. It's not completely gone, but it is currently bereft of life, very sadly. 
building on the left here used to be a bake house with bake ovens in it because the corner shop was a bakery and they had their own ovens behind it and this would have been the bakery the old three cocks in pub call it what you will let's hope it returns to life in effect the village shop now the co-op used to be a farmhouse as you can probably see from the design and it was the duke's head pub once as well another long lost pub these two cottages were converted farm outbuildings and uh, date back a long way they go back to the 1600s On the left here, blacksmiths, forge, call it what you will, and it is still called the old forge. And those would have been the main doors for entry to it. The house next door is Pitchley House. Early to mid 1700s, although you can't see it written on the wall, but it is. rather posh looking house is Fotheringay House again another 1600s build that one over there with the blue doors another lost pub the Angel Inn this goes way back pre 1900s I think I've got an old scratchy photograph I can put up just to prove that it was an inn if you can just about make it out. That's another old pub. It looks like one as well, doesn't it? That was the new inn. And the new inn goes back to the late 1600s. Don't think it's been gone for too long. Might be wrong. Impossible to find any info on that one. It's a mid 1700s house next door to it. And no, I do not know what that is in the front. Uh, I'd love to know what it is. It doesn't seem to be part of the house or originally not. It has a sort of pretty bold ghost door on the front, if not two. No idea what that was. I mentioned earlier about there being a couple of other schools noted on old 1880s maps. Well, this was another one now called Stower House, but that house at the back there was Mark's school and I know nothing about it and I'd love to know something about it but there's nothing documented I learnt something yesterday about these crosses I always thought they held beams up on these houses but they're actually uh, what's known as anchor plates and they basically stop the house from buckling out. So they sort of, uh, they're sort of tied into the wall on the other side of the house. And that's a 1700s house. As I said, lots of old houses here, but most of these are not listed and you'd think they would be. I think we're coming down to the building that actually brought me back here because it's the building I saw once when I was driving through and it sort of stopped me in my tracks because I thought that's not what I would have, was expecting when I came around the bend and you can't even see it here it's kind of out of character but it has, has its own history albeit it's going to be covered in scaffolding by the looks which is not great just my luck That 
artist Wallace's Mill. Wallace's Mill was a clothing factory built in the 1870s, closed in 1979. Uh, so it's been here a while. And when it was built, uh, the owner wanted it to be for that sort of time, the 1870s, completely new age. He wanted the best working conditions possible for his uh, workers and he wanted daylight. He wanted a lot of light in the building rather than what most factories probably looked like in the 1870s, which was probably dark and dingy and sort of sweatshops. Uh, so he put windows in just about every square inch of the building, which makes it look spectacular. Unfortunately, we've got scaffolding in. I'll put up a picture that hasn't got scaffolding in. Spectacular building. Albeit it sort of doesn't fit in with the rest of Brigstock, but it's a real landmark if you're coming into Brigstock from this direction, which I think is the sort of Stanion and Corby side. The first big building that greets you, really. You don't forget it. Now being converted into flats. You won't be surprised to hear. some work to do in there that's for sure right up to the 1950s there used to be a huge wood yard here sawmill chopping up trees making god knows what turning them into planks uh, quite sizable on the left here and it's all gone been developed but it uh, survives in the name of Woodyard Close. Always a good way of working out it. history, if you like, street names, house names. This is a Grade 2 listed bridge dating back to the 1700s. Not sure I'm going to be able to see it other than on top of it. I'll dangle you all over the side of the bridge, you might see something I can't see. Coming up to a second bridge now. You wouldn't expect less for a street called Bridge Street. Can't just have one bridge. This is the bridge over Harpers Brook, which is the main waterway that runs through Brigstock and floods quite regularly and causes problems quite regularly. Sounds like a waterfall. Harper's Brook starts off somewhere between Corby and Market Harbour, so it's travelled quite a distance to get here. As you can see, it's not a, it's not a small stream by any means. It's almost more like a small river. Uh, it flows into the Neen at Thrapston, so it has, it's quite a, long, uh, quite a long trek. And as I say, it floods quite a lot. It used to flood um, in, in a quite damaging way in the past. I think they've improved things somewhat recently. There's a lot of old newspaper reports about flood damage here. Uh, even relatively recently. Lovely house. The Kinder House. A 
think I spent longer during the research trying to find the old Fox and Hounds pub which was somewhere right in front of us and I could not find it the only instruction I could find or documentation said it was opposite uh, Park Cottage and I know where Park Cottage is it's on the left with the thatch just ahead and it said it was opposite a lot of these look like they could have been pubs but I don't think any of them were because I think it's been demolished that one on the right with the sign hanging off new build was where the Fox and Hounds was that was my conclusion I think it literally was opposite Park Cottage and that is Park Cottage on the left with the thatch um, I mean I looked at this building out the back here and thought well, it could be a pub but it's new that's not an old building so I will conclude at the Fox and Hounds there's another one that has vanished completely can't see much of Park Cottage it's a nice old one but well hidden away those walls look as old as the cottage as well and the Fox and Hounds is now the Swallows Rest Bed and Breakfast albeit it used to stand here probably had a thatch roof and has been completely leveled this is all new I think that mystery is solved if you know different then do let us know I'd genuinely like to know if I've got it wrong I kept looking at these buildings thinking they could be pubs but they're not opposite Park Cottage so I'm not going to have that and they look like separate properties so can't really be a pub That was the one I fancied most to be the pub, but it's not, I'm sure. It's gone. I meant to mention earlier when we stopped at the first of the bridges, the Grade 2 listed one, that the little trickling stream underneath it was actually the, uh, the mill race from the water mill that is here, was here. Um, the mill is to our right as we look now, so that was the water coming away from the mill. There's hardly anything on it, which means that the mill race is obviously being blocked now, closed, or reduced to a trickle. Um, and the mill itself, well, you know me, I love my water mills. We won't be seeing this one, unfortunately, because it's just hidden away and there's no way I can get access to it, so. But it's here, and I will have pictures once I get round somewhere close to it. Coming back up onto that uh, Grade 2 listed bridge. I'll just get a quick shot of the uh, leftovers of the mill race. There you go. Down there, the mill's in the distance in the background. You can't see it from here. Number one there, used to be a fish and chip shop, a, a 1920s to 1950s, and if they served from that hatch. Coming up on the right is the Nicholas Latham Primary School. In case you think you know that name, if you've watched the Barnwell video, you'll know all about him. Charitable guy, supported schools all around this area, Arundel, Barnwell, to name but two, and he also did this one. Uh, this one was built in 1873, the original Latham School, it's just around the corner from here, uh, built in the 1600s, but it's still named after him. Wonderful school. And that is the uh, schoolhouse, or headmaster's house if you prefer. What a lovely building. With a date stamp, which hopefully says 1873, it does indeed. Miller's Forge. Now, is that another blacksmith? Obviously, it was. I think there were several in Brigstock, according to maps. I believe these two uh, pillars with the uh, balls on top are listed. Grade two listed. Connected to the manor house, which is down there, which is another thing we're going to struggle to see today. 
United Reformed Church. It used to be the Congregational Chapel. Built in 1799, still standing, still operating as a chapel. Don't know if we can get down there, looks like we can. Stop United Reformed Church. We'll be building. And it's a set of gravestones here. Let's go and pick on one of these. That one looks a good one. John and Mary Smith departed this life August 1865, aged 67 years. Or oh, sorry, Mary, the daughter of John and Mary Smith. Don't know what that is. Is that part of the chapel built 1819? If it is, it was added on after the 1799 building of the chapel. Notice the name on that one, the Loweth family, Arthur Loweth, died on the 3rd, 18th I'm sure there is a link between the Loweth family and water mills, certainly elsewhere. I shall have a look into that one. Just coming down to the water mill on our left, that unfortunately I can't see much of. Dates back to the 1700s, stopped uh, milling in 1910. Uh, the wheel has been restored and I'd love to see it. I'll put some photographs up. The building on the left here is actually the granaries where they'd store the grain. Sort of ghost doorway there or lintel. Yeah, I'd love to get in there and see. But I can't. Coming down to Hall Hill. Hall Hill? That's a bit of a mouthful. Hall Hill. And the only surviving pub in the village now, the Green Dragon. There used to be another one. And I think it's this on the left. And I think that one was called the Golden Lion. There were two side by side. I think it's all now part of the Green Dragon. Dates back to the 1600s and still going as the sole pub in the village. That, thanks to the sign above the door, was the Golden Lion. So it wasn't adjacent to the Green Dragon. It didn't last long because it didn't have a license for spirits, only beer. So people went across the road to the uh, Green Dragon instead. This is the village war memorial. This site here was where the original Latham School was in the 1600s before it moved to the site we've just seen. Um, obviously no pictures or nothing but I'm told it was on the site of the uh, war memorial and this is the war memorial. This is the market cross and this dates back to 1586. And at the top, it has, although faded, the initials of every queen. I think it's every queen. Um, it's ruled this country since the cross was first built. So the oldest one should be Elizabeth the first. And it is ER 1586. Queen Elizabeth I, and that was the year this cross was built. 
Don't ask me to tell you who the others are. That one there, number two, was a post office between 1910 and 1920. It was the only years when that post office we saw earlier uh, wasn't a post office. It moved here for 10 years before going back again. It looks like on the side there, it's a rather large lintel at the bottom. It almost looks like there's a shop there. It certainly looked different. Looking at that stonework. Rather wonderful emporium there. 1600s that one. Not the shop of course, but the building. Some wonderful old buildings on this little stretch. Uh, all these buildings on the left, on the right, sorry, uh, early 1700s, and look it as well. Very nice. Coming down to the vicarage now and the church of vicarage. I think I don't know the vicarage is that old. Um, excuse the noise. Yeah, I don't think it's that old, early 1800s. But the church, as that sign gives it away, is old. We're talking seriously old. It's a very special church. The Church of St Andrew. I said at the start of the video we'd see evidence of the Anglo-Saxon origins of Briggs Dock. Well, this is it. Uh, this church is a rarity. It dates back to Anglo-Saxon times and Anglo-Saxon elements of it are still standing. Um, not least that section on the far left, that circular tower, turret, call it what you will. Um, those are sort of bell stairs, turrets or towers. Inside there's a spiral staircase that would have taken people up to the bells. And it's still standing and it was built in Anglo-Saxon times. I'll come on to dates in a moment, but it is fantastic. There's elements of Anglo-Saxon, elements of Norman. It's a historian's delight. The big downside of the Anglo-Saxon era is very little was documented, so proving exactly what happened when is very difficult. But consensus of opinion has it that this church was built around 600 or 700 AD. Um, it was believed to have been badly damaged, almost completely wrecked by the Danes, otherwise known, aka the Vikings. And then it was built back up again from what was left at around about 800 AD. And then there's been modifications since then in the Norman era and so on and so forth. But as I say, the Anglo-Saxon bits still exist. And a lot of historians think there's two tiers of Anglo-Saxon build here. There's the original sort of pre-Viking wrecking stage and there is the post-Viking wrecking stage. And they point at this bell tower as being an example because they say at the bottom the stonework is distinctly different to what it is further up. And they think the bottom part of the tower survived the Viking raid, um, but the rest of it was built up. Uh, I'm no expert, I'm a savage, so I can't really point at anything. So well, there's the... Uh, there's the proof, but that's the argument. I don't profess to be an expert on the architecture of the Anglo-Saxon period, but I'm told, uh, if you ignore the metalwork here, um, the way those big stones are aligned, they call it long and short work. Uh, long and short work is apparently a typical Anglo-Saxon style of building, where in effect you've got a slab on its side and then a slab vertical and a slab on its side and so on and so forth. Listen, I'm no expert but they call it Anglo-Saxon long and short work. So 
So there you go. Claimed in most history books to be an Anglo-Saxon window. It's in an Anglo-Saxon tower, so why wouldn't it be? Others have said, what's that lintel doing up above it? Um, that lintel suggests there was a window here before. So again, that might just tie in with the, well, the original window was smashed by the Vikings and they built a new one. Seems to make sense. One way or the other, the lintel and the window are Anglo-Saxon. No smooth um, arches at the top of that. If I'd have done my homework better, I'd probably be able to tell you what every single element of this church is about. But I didn't. You can read up on it, Brigstock Church. There's a lot to read. A conglomeration of many ages. Another Anglo-Saxon tower there, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And that door, ooh, that could be a Norman door. I don't mean the wooden bit, although that looks pretty old. Uh, but the arch itself, single piece, soft arch, that looks Norman. That's my uneducated guess. What on earth is the purpose of that? in the castle it might make sense but uh, yeah smallest window I think I've ever seen certainly in a church right not content with seeing this beautiful church from the outside um, I did see someone just go in the church so I'm gonna go around and see if I can gate crash and get inside um, there's a couple of things in there I'd like to see fingers crossed can't get over how immaculate these stones are. William Knight, a native of this village who died on the 2nd of May 1846 in his 84th year of age. Also of Elizabeth Knight, wife of the above who died February the 18th, 1852, aged 80. We'll see if we can find something about these people. But they will be remembered for centuries to come because this stone is not aging at all. Incredible, really. Right, let's see if we can get in. We made it in. This is what I wanted to see. I'd have been heartbroken not to see this. I mean, it's no, it's no tick and coat, um, jazzed up archway, but that is an Anglo-Saxon arch. That is incredible. That is monstrous. That will date back to about 800s, 700s even. It's just huge, solid plain Anglo-Saxon. I've never seen one of those before. That is also an Anglo-Saxon, I was going to say window, but it's actually a doorway with steps. how thick the walls are. Just inside the Anglo-Saxon arch is that, which is absolute classic Norman arch. Got it all going on here. And above it, you've got a Norman window as well. Eleven hundreds, probably. Three 
three arches there, one on the right is obviously more recent than the other two. The other two are classic Norman smooth arches. The one on the right's got a pointy arch, post Norman. And there's an interesting uh, something going on above that one. Um, I think what's happened is that used to be the side of the church, that would have been a Norman window in the church when they extended out sideways into this sort of aisle at the side with all the seats. Um, they put this, this Norman arch was built straight through the sides to give access way. So all of this must have happened in the Norman period. You've almost got two Norman eras here. The older one being the window at the top and the more recent Norman period. The big arches below. At a guess. Somebody important. Robert Vernon, first Baron of Lyveden. wonder how old that is. It's got to be a couple of hundred years old. At least 1800s, I would say. That's a coffin bearing carriage of some sort. I presume hand pulled into the church. Not sure they'll use it anymore. More of that sort of long and short Anglo-Saxon stonework up the side there. look before I go. Amazing. That is the manor house and that's about as good as we're going to see. I will put some pictures up as well, if I can find some. That dates back to 1150, and I'd love to get close up, but I can't. Unless I find a cunning way to do it. it used to be a hunting lodge in its early days. King John I of England used to come up here hunting and stayed over. And it became a manor house. And I think the manor was held by the Montagues, again, same as Barnwell, uh, for some period of time. Another view of Harper's Brook on its way to Thrapston. Wherever you walk in Briggs, don't you run into more historic buildings. I can tell you nothing about these. They're not listed. But they're lovely buildings. Ghost doorway there, or window. Might be a window actually. Somewhere up here is an old chapel, Methodist chapel, I think. Yes, that's that brick building. Dates back to 1843, now used by the Women's Institute. Why not? Keeps it alive. I 
I can read the date stamp but it's 1843 I can tell you I can see a three on the end of it that will do trying hard here to get some shots of the manor house I think that's one wing of it and doesn't look like it's the oldest part I am trying to get some shots of the manor house but uh, I know I can't do it because I was uh, doing my homework with maps and you just can't get near it I was to walk straight through this field and down the hill that looks like a more modern wing of it you know, all the bits behind the trees on the right to end on a war grave somewhere if I can find one there you go I found one 100742 private ES Swan of the Durham Light Infantry 24th of February 1919 it's my birthday not the 1919 but the 24th of February age 22 is uh, that's no age to die that's a brave man and may he rest in peace and I thank him for his efforts as we all should What a glorious morning, or well, it's afternoon now, what a glorious day. I'm told it's going to rain the rest of the week, but I don't care now. I've had my trip out. Uh, that's Brig Stop for you, well that's a skeletal Brig Stop for you. It's the sort of place, you know, it doesn't just have history, it has layers of history. Now what I mean by that is you can walk down the high street and you can you can say, well, that's a 1600s and that's a 1700s and that's a 1500s and so on and so forth. But each one of those buildings has sort of had different lives since then. Uh, as, as traders, you might have a carpenter, uh, an undertaker, a grocer, a butchers, a baker, a candlestick maker, etc. Each house could have its own video, really. And when I started researching this one, I thought, this is too much. You know, this is overwhelming, I'm never going to be able to cope with all this, I'll never be able to remember it all. So, but you just have to go out there and do a sort of skeletal, as I have done really. Look at the pictures as much as anything and uh, there's, just, there's just a lot of history, as I say, uh, lots of layers of history. It's a fantastic place and long may it stay as it is, but as you saw with the pub closing and whatever, nothing stands still. So I'm glad I've grabbed um, what I've grabbed while it's here. Um, church, fantastic, you know, uh, I knew the church was here, it doesn't get a lot of publicity, given that it's got Anglo-Saxon uh, um, architecture, it should really be known better than it, uh, than it is, uh, that may be a good thing, do we really want loads of people traipsing in there, I don't know, but it's worth seeing, you know, Anglo-Saxon uh, architecture surviving today uh, is rare, you have to travel to see that, so to bump into that is very astonishing. It's fantastic. So, so that's it. I hope, uh, I hope something of interest came across in the video. I hope you enjoyed part of it, and uh, thank you as ever for keeping me company. And uh, any comments, and you know, I know there's there's more to it than what I've covered. Uh, I'm sure to have made mistakes. I'm sure to have missed a few things. I knew I'd missed a few things. I just thought, nah, leave that one. Otherwise, it just gets uh, too detailed. But yeah, by all means, throw your comments. Good, bad indifferent underneath the video whether it be on Peterborough Images or, or on YouTube and if you haven't already subscribed just smash that little subscription button in the bottom corner of the screen uh, I always appreciate that and, and and yeah that's it thank you for coming along 
and I'll be out again, especially if the weather's like this, at some point not too far in the distance. So I will see you then.